It's Friday! No, I'm just, just kidding. Um, yesterday, uh, we did hear Mark's opinion um, about when the end was gonna take as he talked about the abomination of desolation. What we discovered is that for him, this tribulation actually already happened in AD 70 when Rome invaded Jerusalem, desecrating the temple. Um, but today, Jesus begins after the tribulation. And, and you gotta remember that in Mark's mind, that time is now. And, and so in Mark's understanding as he's telling this story, what Jesus, what we're gonna look at today, and what Jesus describes could happen any day, right? Mark thought that, we think that, and we need to have the same mindset that Jesus was inviting his followers to have back in the first century. And so it goes to say this in verse 24, but in those days after the tribulation, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The stars will be falling from heaven. The powers in heaven will be shaken. Again, it's gonna be cosmically bad. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds. Like, let's remember, the elect are the chosen. And what are they chosen for? They are chosen to be witnesses, chosen to declare the good news of the kingdom of God. And where does Jesus find them when he comes? From the four winds, from the ends of the earth. Like they have scattered across the whole earth, declaring the gospel to, to all nations. Like, Mission accomplished, church. We reached all nations and that's when Jesus gathers them up. That's why so many disciples lost their lives, spread across the known world, is because Jesus said, this is gonna be the end. This is when I'm gonna come back, when the gospel is proclaimed to all nations, like Jesus set the finish line. Verse 29 through 31, he says this, he says, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. And remember, Mark thinks those things have already happened. So in Mark's mind, as he sends this letter out to the known world, like he thinks that it's true that Jesus is near at the very gates. Jesus goes on to say, truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. You can see now why Mark thinks it's already taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. All right, let's keep going. I just want you to, I want you to catch something. Jesus just said, <laughs> this generation will not pass away, but look what, look what he says next. next. But concerning the day or that hour, no one knows. Jesus has just said this generation will not pass away until all these things come, but concerning that day and that hour, no one knows, not the angels in heaven, not the son, only the father. Do you see it again? Jesus, like he addresses this when question, but then he says, listen, I know you wanna know when, the more important question is how are you going to live right now? Like, let's not spend our time staring at leaves trying to discern when the season is coming. Instead, he says, be on guard, keep awake. Now listen, he's gonna say it in verse 33, he's gonna say it in 35, and he's gonna say it again in 36. Stay awake, stay awake stay awake. So listen, whether it comes, whether this end, whether Jesus returns now 
where a thousand years from now, every generation needs to live with the urgency as if Jesus were, were speaking to them saying, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place, until I come back. This is the generation. In Jesus' mind, every generation was supposed to listen, to live with this same urgency. So what does it look like for us to stay awake in our generation? What it means is this, is that we remember that God, He's God, not me, right? That's called the fear of the Lord. And we're called to live if with that mindset, it's the beginning of wisdom. If we're gonna stay awake, we have to remember that Jesus is Lord. In kid life, we say he's the boss of my life. I'm not the boss of my life. He is, that's what it looks like to stay awake. If we're gonna stay awake, we have to remember that this life, life in the dash, that's not all there is. You see, there, there is a literal forever place called hell where people who want to live apart from God will be separated from all the things of God forever. That, that, that brings a sense of urgency to our heart. There, there's also a literal and a forever place called heaven, a place that is separated from anything that is not from God. And, and when we think of that, it creates a sense of hope. The, remembering that life is, this life is not all there is, it wakes us up. We also need to remember that God decided to use you as his witness, as his plan A to declare the good news of a life with God through Jesus and as Pastor Rick reminded us last year, there is no plan B. You are God's plan A. He doesn't have a backup plan. And the final thing is if we're gonna stay awake, we have to fight the sleepiness and the forgetfulness that comes from going with the flow in our culture. And so, the final reminder, the final challenge during our week, looking at the teachings of Jesus, is church, we gotta stay awake. We gotta remember that God is God and Jesus is Lord. We've gotta remember that this life is not all there is. And we've got to remember that our decisions have eternal consequences in the lives of other people. And we have to remember that we are the witnesses chosen to declare the goodness of God and the life that these people apart from him can have with him. And we've got to fight from falling in line with the flow of culture. And if we'll do that, man, we'll be set for eternity, but we'll also bring others with us as we head that direction. So love you church. I've enjoyed spending this week with you, diving into the words of Jesus. Be blessed.